it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for March 2018. And Virgo, I'm getting you in and getting you out this month. Now, a couple things you do need to know is that we have a month this month where we have three moons, only two of them are full moons, and then we'll have a new moon as well. We have got Mercury, Venus, and Mars all changing signs. As well, we've got Jupiter taking a retrograde as well as Mercury, our communication planet, taking a retrograde. So we're going to talk through all of that. But before we jump in, want to make sure you've taken advantage of your 36,000 subscriber gift, Astrology 102, $3 Thursdays. All of it is in the description box down below. And I hope to see you um, connecting in one of those ways. All right, Virgo, so as we're kicking off the month this month, we are starting right here on the first with a full moon happening in your sign. And this is my deal with this for you this month. I know you like to not really show your emotions, really kind of have it together, but this is an emotional full moon for you. There could really be emotions just welling to the surface. And for some of you Virgos, especially in the days before, it could look a lot like anger. And then you come to the other side and you realize what the emotion actually is and maybe what it's trying to show you to help you get to. Now the other thing I feel like this full moon actually is very fortunate for you with is business in some way, shape, or form. If you've got something going on in business or you've got something you want to launch out or you want to take yourself out into the world because this full moon is happening in your sign. So you have the propulsion to move yourself towards a different direction. Um, that's why I say, really, if you get a hit on something that you want to be doing in the world, and I say that because this moon actually has a nice connection with Saturn, which is an achievement, business, structure kind of energy, go out there, trust um, your intuition, trust maybe if you've been having dreams about it, trust your emotions right now, honestly, and I don't tell you that often, but trust your emotions if it's just like, I cannot do this and be here one more day or, oh my gosh, this seems really exciting. At least take the opportunity to investigate it, okay? Now, one of the other things a full moon does for every single one of us is helps us see a more connected side of ourselves. And so for you, you know, maybe with the emotions welling to the surface, what you find out is that you really feel connected to someone a little bit more. Um, Certainly it could be a friendship energy, it could be a romantic energy, but whatever it is, you just kind of, I think your appreciation for the connection of people around you is a little bit higher, okay? Now, as we continue to travel through the month, on the 6th, we've got both Mercury and Venus taking the step into Aries, giving a lot of blessing to your eighth house space. So taxes, joint resources, maybe your partner's getting some financing or something like that, but whatever it is around the issue of joint resources, astrology, metaphysics, um, sex, all of these things, information is going to start moving a lot more quickly. It's in the sign of Aries. It's going to be very abrupt, very forward, very direct. Venus is going to try and help some put some harmonic diplomatic self on all of that, but whatever it is, you're having pretty specific conversation and it's going to be in an area where you are intimately connected to another source or another person. So this could be financially lucrative to you, which is great. I would tell you if you can handle the taxes, signing the contracts, making the decisions before the 22nd when Mercury goes retrograde because that just complicates things. You have to do things over again. So if you can start doing those things now, you have some mover shakers, you have the lovers helping you out here. Now, on the 8th, Jupiter is going to take this retrograde in Scorpio. This is in your communication sector. So while Jupiter is going along, you're communicating, you're sharing things, you're writing grants, you're doing these proposals, you're analyzing, you're whatever it is that you're doing, your mental life maybe feels a lot more calm. As Jupiter gets ready to retrograde, you're going to have to shove back inside. That's what a retrograde does. It asks us to re-revisit, reignite, re-invigorate. Um, reconnect, right? So with Jupiter here, the wisdom, it's like you get to take a step back and see everything that you have learned. Maybe you're going back to study something else. Maybe you want to study or you're, you become interested in something moving you in a new direction, but the information comes from within. I think the other part of um, what happens when Jupiter is retrograde, especially in your third house, is you're going to look at how you're talking to yourself. How are you talking about yourself? How are you talking to yourself? What kind of decisions are you making? What is that internal Internal mental life look like for sure. Now for some Virgos as well, um, with energies that came out of February as it moved us emotionally into March, some of you could be rethinking about, re-looking at 
things in your early childhood as well and maybe taking on the wisdom that that time is gone and you're moving on something like that could certainly be happening now an important date i really want you to mark your calendars around is the 14th jupiter is going to be in a semi-square to saturn we've got jupiter here in the third house saturn's over here rocking capricorn in your fifth house and what this aspect says is you've got to restructure in order to take advantage of an opportunity, right? You've got to speak up. You've got to reorganize this fifth house space. Children, um, joy, creative expression, maybe taking a risk, maybe showing your own heart. Any of these things, you've got to do something new, restructure that area in order to take advantage of communicating something out there, big, beautiful, and ready to go. You've got to restructure, you know, um, in this fifth house in order to get some mental clarity here in your third house as well. On the 17th, we've got a new moon happening at 26 degrees of Pisces. This is in your opposite energy, so the seventh house. And at the same time, on the exact same day, we've got Mars moving over into Capricorn. Now, this new moon that's going to be happening here in this partnership-oriented energy um, and with Mars moving over here into your fifth house, this is a very lovely, loving, action-based, romance, children kind of energy. These two houses lit up and ignited are a source of fertility. I always think, oh, here we go. If you don't want to be having babies, you need to protect yourself at this time because it's a busy time. Even if you're single, oh my goodness, somebody could be ushered in out of nowhere. Um, you could have an old lover come back because Mercury is in shadow time and it is infamous for bringing back people from the past. But this is a time where new things, new relationships, new conceptions can begin. Mars and Capricorn is going to want to achieve in this fifth house. So starting something new, whether it be a pregnancy, um, things with your current children, your inner child coming out, creative expression, any of those things, levels of joy. I think I think you move in this energy in the position to begin having new joy in relationships. New starts all around though at this new moon. On the 20th, the sun moves into Aries. We start the astrological new year. We've begun our seasons again. It's a very exciting time. Your eighth house will be absolutely lit up. But then on the 22nd, going all the way until April 15th, you're going to need to pay attention to this eighth house space because Mercury is moving retrograde. And like I said, when Mercury is our communication planet and it's retrograde you could be rethinking re-editing redoing revising if you're trying to get that mortgage um, you're trying to get your taxes done whatever it is you could be re-looking over these things or having to put in a little bit of extra effort but you know the extra effort may be worth the wait because whatever mercury's trying to show you you need to revise so that you have smooth sailing going forward now on the 31st of the month as we are leaving March we have got a full moon happening in the sign of Libra at 10 degrees this is happening in your second house so I actually really enjoy this full moon for you um, as well because even though it's happening in your second house which a full moon in the second house can mean that income dries up for about four weeks it really can so if that is something that you experience that is typical of full moon energy but it could also mean that in some way, shape, or form, you stop acting like you don't have a genuine talent that you have and you launch it out. You get ready to launch it out. You acknowledge it. The second house is not just about earning that money, getting that check. It's also about what are the talents you have and maybe it's time for you to pull your own covers, call your own BS, and start to show yourself in a different way. What's your value? What your What's your talent? What's the light you have to bring to the table? And this could also be in terms of relationships as well. Maybe in your relationship you're realizing you have a little bit more to bring to the table or maybe your partner has something to bring to the table and you're ready to make, make different connections in that way this could be in business friendship and in romance of course all right virgo i think it's going to be a great month uh, all of the emotional stuff will pass so just stay the course it's all showing you something okay like this video comment share subscribe i hope to see you connecting in one of the ways that we connect either on facebook stormygrace.com or here I love you guys.